Hello, and welcome to the Star Citizen Beginner's Guide. In part four of this series, you are going to learn how Star Citizen is being funded. Now, Star Citizen is being funded a little bit differently than other computer games are usually funded in that there is no publisher involved in the development of the game. And it is the publisher who, for the most part, provides all the financial support for game development. Now, Cloud Imperium Games, they are being financially supported through something called crowdfunding. Put in simple terms, crowdfunding is when the public supports the funding of a particular project, in this case, Star Citizen. Put even more simply, Star Citizen is being funded by, well, people like you and me. There is a website for Star Citizen called robertsspaceindustries.com. And on that website, you could help fund the development of Star Citizen. Now, before you go thinking, hey, wait a minute, doesn't it cost millions of dollars to fund computer games? Well, yeah, that's true. But that doesn't mean that you, as an individual, has to contribute thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars. Pretty much any amount that you wish to contribute will be just fine. You could donate $40, $50 if you wish. I know some people that have donated multiple thousands of dollars, but those people are kind of like a little crazy. Now, for any financial contributions you wish to put in toward the development of Star Citizen, Cloud Imperium Games gives you various spaceships and other miscellaneous items related to the game as a way of saying, hey, thanks, we really appreciate that. And naturally, the more money you contribute, the more good stuff you can get. Furthermore, the items that CIG gives us in exchange for our financial contributions, we get to use those during the alpha and beta testing phases of game development. So it's not like you give X number of dollars to Star Citizen and in exchange you get a, a ship. Okay, You don't have to wait, you know, uh, a year and a half or two years from now for when the game comes out before you can use that ship. Lots of the ships that you can get on the RSA website, you can fly right now in various test modules that are being developed as the development of the game goes forward. And the really cool part is, once Star Citizen is launched, we get to keep all the goodies that we got and use those in the real game. Now, the question you may be asking is, why did CIG decide to go with crowdfunding instead of going the more traditional route of having a publisher? There are numerous advantages in taking this route. The first advantage is that there are no corporate suits sitting up in their ivory towers giving commands to the programmers and artists and designers down in the trenches doing all the busy work. What this means is that all the decisions for the development of Star Citizen are occurring from the bottom up instead of from the top down. And what that means is the programmers, the artists, the illustrators, the designers are the ones who are making all the decisions on how the game will be developed. What this also means is that any decisions that need to be made can be made much, much faster because the people who are making those choices are right there in the trenches where all the action is taking place. Another advantage is that there are no artificial deadlines as far as when the game must be released. So, for example, let's say the programmers come up with a really great idea for a new feature for the game. So they go to the publisher and they say, hey, we've got this great idea that we didn't think of before and we would like to implement it in the game. Well, the publisher might say something like this. He might say, well, we can't do that. I mean, that's going to delay 
release of the game by three months. And we have to have this game released by the holiday season because that's when most of our sales occur for the entire year. So forget about it. Not going to happen. Or they might say something along the lines of, well, that's a good idea, but we can't implement it now. But what we can do is after the game is released, we could add that in as a sort of add-on game package that we can charge our customers a little bit extra for. With a crowdfunding route, that isn't so much of a problem because there is no software publisher to clog up the works, so to speak. Another advantage to going the crowdfunding route is that features being implemented in the game can be developed to their fullest extent, even if it takes a little bit longer to do so. If Cloud Imperium Games was dealing with a publisher, what may have happened is that a rigid timeline would be imposed on the software developers in that certain features of the game would only be given a specific length of time to be worked on, and then they would have to move on to other sections of the game, regardless of how well developed the previous feature had been fleshed out to. In other words, with the model that Cloud Imperium Games is going with, they don't have to settle for just good enough. They could take each feature of the game and really go at it and develop it to its fullest potential. And this applies to every feature in the game. And the two final advantages are that Cloud Imperium Games would not have to give up the exclusive rights to distribute and market the game, since they're going to be doing that themselves. And finally, they would not have to give up the intellectual property rights of the game to the publisher after the game is released. Cloud Imperium Games will retain full control of all the game assets. Now, there are some more advantages to crowdfunding, or rather, not necessarily crowdfunding, but what crowdfunding allows Cloud Imperium Games to do, which they would not otherwise be able to if they were working through a publisher. For example, because the game is being funded by, again, just ordinary people like you and me, Cloud Imperium Games can take input from us, you know, things like feedback, um, suggestions for making game improvements, modifications, and so on. They could take that information all throughout the entire length of game development and make changes to the game. Another really great advantage is that rather than the standard model of game testing in which there is a little bit of game testing during game development and then a really big push for doing uh, game testing like a few months before the game is released, uh, with Star Citizen, there is intense game testing being done all the time during the entire length of the game development process by all of us who have contributed to the support of Star Citizen. And also, Cloud Imperium Games uh, answers to us, the people who are actually going to be playing the game in the first place. Which is great because what this does is it, it forms a symbiotic relationship where we are dependent upon them to make the game of our dreams and they are dependent upon us to give them feedback on what we think this so-called game of our dreams should finally end up being like. And the most important advantage is that when we contribute to the development of Star Citizen, I don't know about you, but I get a warm, happy feeling inside knowing that I'm contributing to making Star Citizen a success. So how many people have contributed to Star Citizen and how much money has been raised so far? Well, take a look at this. 867,000 citizens. That is what we're referred to as. We're called citizens of the Star Citizen universe. Now, not all of those people have bought ships or have 
given money to the game yet. But uh, I imagine by the time the game is released, all these people will. Oh, yeah. And so far, over $78 million has been raised. That is amazing. Not only is Star Citizen the biggest crowdfunded game in the history of crowdfunding, Star Citizen is the biggest crowdfunding anything ever in the history of crowdfunding. Now, when you go on to the RSI website, what kind of goodies do you get in exchange for your contribution? Well, let's run through this really quick, and I'll show you. For example, you can get spaceships. Of course, duh, it's a space game. Another way you can show your support is by getting a subscriber plan. And there are two kinds, the Centurion and the Imperator. Oh, and these prices uh, shown here, these are per month, not per year. So what do you get if you become a subscriber? Well, you get access to Jump Point Magazine, which is a oh, 60, 70 to 80 page monthly magazine that gives subscribers lots of the uh, inside scoop on what's going on in the development of Star Citizen. Something else you get is uh, access to the vault, which is basically a sort of repository of artwork that is being created during the development of Star Citizen. You also get access to a whole bunch of really cool wallpapers for your computer. And subscribers get their own private message board to chat amongst one another. Plus, we get something called Subscriber Flare. And what this is, is uh, each month we get a special item uh, created just for us that we can put in our hangar. Um, some of the recent items have been a jukebox, a locker. Uh, you can get an aquarium with fish in it. You can get a uh, calendar, um, ship models, uh, all sorts of cool stuff like that. And if there is a flare item that you did not receive because that, that item was only available like a few months ago and you just signed up, you can still buy it. Now, another route you could take would be to purchase UEC credits. And they come in $5, $10, and $20 increments, which translate to 5,000, 10,000, and 20,000 UEC credits. So basically, for every 1,000 UEC, it costs you $1. Now, what you can do with these credits is you can go on to their online store, and you can buy weapons for yourself and for your ship, Things like laser cannons and missiles and um, tractor beams, cool stuff like that. You can also get different kinds of shields for ships as well. This is a fairly current um, item in the store. And if you want to add a special touch to your ship hanger, you can buy posters, you can buy your own aquarium with alien fish in it, uh, you can buy your own um, sort of a futuristic golf cart, and lots of other cool stuff. But wait, there's more. You can also buy cool merchandise to show off your Star Citizen pride. You can get things like uh, mouse pads and models and um, um, T-shirts and that sort of stuff. Now, if you're a space game fan like I am, look, you have to buy some article of clothing that has the name Star Citizen on it. I mean, after all, don't you want to look as cool as this guy? Now, one thing to keep in mind is you don't need to get any of this stuff to get into the game Star Citizen. You don't need extra shields for your ship or fancy stuff for your hanger or a t-shirt or any of that sort of stuff. All you need to do is get a ship package and you're good to go. Although... 
you got to admit this stuff is pretty cool. And so we come to the end of part four in this series in the Beginner's Guide to Star Citizen. As always, if you have something to say, hey, leave me a comment. I will most likely reply. And if you want to show more support for my channel, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below. Until next time, this is Citizen Academy wishing all of you fame and fortune in the verse.